Hello, and this is a walkthrough for making a digital denture from an intraoral scan of a copy file of a denture. Um, as you can see here, we've already prepared some of the mandibular files because we're going to be making a bridge, which I've prepared here. And the bridge will then be uh, used for then a uh, high performance polymer uh, partial framework, which will slide onto the full contour zirconia bridge. Um, we're not going to cover that in this video, but basically what I wanted to um, discuss was the idea that you can isolate the intaglio surface of what you see here um, and render a file for use, which will give you a result like this. This file can then be blocked out using the, um, the virtual blockout uh, feature in ExoCAD. This is important because you don't want to engage any of the undesirable undercuts, although the amount of offset and undercut that you would like to engage can be uh, altered here. I like these settings, so we're going to go ahead and just press apply. All the small holes will be automatically filled and, and any of the undesirable undercuts which you can see here that are marked in red will be blocked out. Creating the bottom surface of our denture. So you can see here that using the edit meshes, I've already taken the time to separate the two meshes, basically making it easy for us to visualize the difference. But you see here, there's no difference between the two meshes. So once the operation is complete, we just go ahead and replace the teeth with new CAD teeth. Some uh, sometimes it's easier to visualize just in a monochromatic as opposed to color. So we'll come here to place teeth, but not first without uh, giving us a little bit of guidance um, uh, from the pre-existing teeth. If you're not using a denture, a bite rim will suffice, although uh, visualizing where the teeth uh, can go really will help because you can really nail um, the placement right away pretty good. So you'll see here that using the tooth placement uh, uh, feature in ExoCAD, we'll now basically move all teeth simultaneously, keeping the symmetry of all the teeth and kind of the proportion um, is really key to having this work appropriately. So first thing we'll do is we'll set the centrals in place. I'm using the control key to rotate, and then the shift key to scale. Once we have a result that is, that is close, what we'll do is we'll ensure that the centrals are sized appropriately. That'll give us um, the insurance that the card of teeth that we're using is, um, uh, is uh, appropriate for the patient. If, uh, uh, if if basically the denture in the mouth does not display appropriately, what I suggest is making physical uh, alterations to the denture with rather composite or making a duplicate denture and doing it to the duplicate denture. So after we have the centrals placed, we'll lock the placement of them and then we'll actually take the the most distal tooth and using this little UFO here we can basically ensure that the placement is appropriate. If there's a change in basically the arc of the teeth you just lock the most posterior tooth 
and you make the arch rather more rounded or triangular. <laughs> then basically from here what we'll do is we'll rotate the other side of the arch. If you wanted to make it um, uh, symmetrical, there's an easy way to do that by clicking the symmetry button. Um, although not all arches are uh, symmetrical in their uh, uh, in uh, their proper regard. So basically what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and fix that. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pre press symmetry anyways just to ensure that I'm as close to symmetry as possible. If you get something like this where basically um, the lateral and canine are not kind of within the arc of uh, the original position, what you could do is you can just lock the tooth that looks like it's appropriate and then it'll move the section in between. So that's a decently close copy. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make sure that everything looks appropriate. Fixing some of the line angles here. And then now here. Rendering us a pretty good result. So once your teeth are placed, it's important to then mark um, the end point of your gingiva and setting the thickness of your base. I like to set at two millimeters, although you can set greater or less, depending on the case. Then you can go ahead and press the end point of your gingiva. And then your ginger should auto or your gingiva should automatically uh, generate in a few seconds. Leaving you a result like this. Um, so essentially, if you are happy with the placement of your teeth and how your gingiva looks, um, this is the point where you can merge and save. But the one last thing we need to do is make sure that the teeth are adapted to the base. So this is now basically where I like to save my position um, uh, in the workflow and, uh, and basically call this the wax up scene. Um, this allows you to come back to this scene and then alter um, the position of the teeth. So if you're going to be creating a monochromatic denture, what you're going to do, or in a monolithic denture, what you're going to do is basically adapt at zero. There's no need to leave space for the, uh, for the 3D printed or milled base. Um, so what you can do there is then just press adapt at zero and you'll see you'll be adapted exactly at zero. One thing you might want to do is just freeform down some of the necks of the teeth, ensuring that you know there's not too much um, tooth neck involved. because sometimes the 3D printed bases or milled bases can be a little bit um, transparent. So just giving that 3D printed or milled base some room is important. So basically, 
um, if you're going to uh, finish for your monochromatic denture, you'll just press merge and save. Um, otherwise, what you could do is come here to freeform and then adapt at a greater number, <coughs> which will allow you to separate the tooth and base later on. So what I like to do is check basically for uh, the proper space with, um, with the cut view tool. So I'll actually go ahead and I'll measure, make sure that I have two millimeters of space this is one millimeter. This will be pretty close, but it should be decent um, for what we're trying to do here. All right, cool. <coughs> Thanks.